Y... Go. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Wednesday edition of Ambassadorial Wing. Glad you all could be here this evening. And tonight we are going to be covering a couple of lost gems from the Disney Vault. And with me this evening, I've got my two pa my two guests, Stone Loki and Rocast. Gentlemen, good evening. Thank you for being here. Hope you both are doing well. So thanks for inviting me. Oh yeah, thank you for the invite, man. I love these movies. Yeah, as do I. And to the chat, uh, to my moderator, Shorty Storm Dragon, always here on time, always awesome. Thank you for being here, man. Good to see you. And also, uh, just another nerd, welcome, Sir Nerdlot. Uh, Nerdlot, I think you said you were going to be on this. So if you are indeed still going to be on this, I put the link both on Discord and on Twitter. So click that puppy and get your tookus in here if you're still wanting to be on the panel. So. But tonight, folks, we're going to be talking about, like I said, a couple of little uh, Disney gems. We're going to be talking about bed knobs and broomsticks and the Black Cauldron. So, um, gentlemen, let's do it. Where so, you bed begin? so bed knobs and broomsticks, that's like the, you know, Anal, Nathrak, Uthvas, Bethod, Dothya, Lienve. <laughs> Just as you promised you. Ignore <laughs> him, ladies and gentlemen. Loki is full of uh, silly beans this evening. No, that is from Excalibur. You are a couple of weeks late, Loki. Actually, you're a week late. So, you want to try that again? <laughs> How about uh, Bibbity Boppity Boop? Alex. <laughs> How about I bibbity bobbity boo you out of this stream? Uh, at least he's getting out of his system early. Come on. <laughs> he got out of his system before the stream. All right. Oh, you want to try that? Man. It's the locomotion, man. Substitutionary locomotion. Yes. Yeah. Well, and. Traguna, we have Quoides, to Quorum, Sadis D. Sadis D. Yes. Very good. You get a cookie and a gold star. Oh, well done. I get a cookie. Or is it a dark side cookie? <laughs> No, oh. these are these are just cookies. They're so oh. light side or dark side. They're great. They're they're just cookies. So, but yeah, gentlemen, uh, which of these gems do you want to start off with? Or anything? I, I open the floor to y'all. Uh, for me, um, like bed knobs and broomsticks, I've not seen for many years, but I remember loving it as a kid. So everything that comes from me now is from like my perspective as a child, from what I can remember. Because um, I hadn't seen Black Cauldron, so I thought I'd watch that in preparation. And yeah, I, I remember being, uh, I remember loving like oh, how it's okay. set around a war because my mom was an orphan, my grandmother was an orphan. Um, so, mm -hmm. you know, to me, it's like seeing her childhood in a way. Gotcha. Um, how things were, I had that connection. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, we'll um, we'll start with bed knobs and broomsticks, and then we'll work on we'll talk about black cauldron for a little bit. Yeah, bed knobs and broomsticks actually is said during World War II. It's set in England, obviously in northern England, I think it is. And we've got uh, a great little cast for this film. We've got um, Angela Lansbury. We got Dame, David Tomlinson, who y'all might remember from um, Mary, the first Mary Poppins. He played the father, Mister Banks, saving Mister Banks to quote I've a, seen a him reference. A lot. I recognize mm -hmm. his face from a lot of things from um, oh yeah from the Herbie from the... Herbie Herbie he was in Herbie don't forget Herbie oh, that's right he was in Herbie thank you Loki right. appreciate it. Yeah, he was oh and Sir Nerdlot okay uh, sorry for the confusion but well we'll see you Saturday then uh, for sure so but yeah this was a uh, I think this is actually one of Angela Lansbury's first starring roles and she's had a long career and everything in the matter speaking with. Disney and everything. I mean, obviously she had this. She was the voice of Mrs. Potts in, um, oh, for heaven's sakes, Be Beauty and the Beast. Uh, she had her cameo. She had a cameo at the end of Mary Poppins Returns. She played the kite lady, and I'm sure she's done other stuff as well for Disney. But I think this is one of her very first starring roles, and I honestly like her as uh, Mrs. Price. She was she was a nice lady, and I loved the kids. 
So this is all, I almost think when I think of this, I almost think of it as this is uh, Mary Poppins 2.0 or 1.0 or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Isn't she the same actress from Murder She Wrote? I always recognize. Yep. Her. Yes, Angel yep. Lansbury. Yeah, she. That's one. Yeah. That's one. That's one thing she, she's very well known for is Murder She Wrote. Do anything over here in over here in the U.S. So. Yeah, I yeah. yeah, yeah, and we also have another cameo from a fairly well known and respected actor, Ryan McDowell. He played the town priest. Oh, okay. so, um, I don't remember that. Long long. Yeah, I saw his name in the credits while I was watching it this morning, and I was like, Oh, Ryan McDowell's in this. Okay, cool. So, but yeah, this is this is a this is honestly. I love this movie. I really do. It is. I used to watch it a lot when when I was a kid, and it had been a number of years. And when we had Disney Plus, when we got Disney Plus, I saw it was on there. I was like, "Ooh, I gotta sit down and watch this sometime and talk about it." But yeah, this was. I as did the I same mentioned, thing when we got Disney Plus. I put it on for the kids. So for, they'll probably love this because um, my mm -hmm. seven-year-old stepdaughter she's been learning about the war and what it was mm -hmm. like to be an evacuee and. Uh, so I thought I put that on, and she did like it. She didn't like it at first, but when it got to around the cartoon part, where the yeah. it, it mixes cartoon with um, with live, live action, action. Yeah, yeah. That, I, she was amazed, just as I was when I was a kid. That blew me away <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> because I wasn't expecting it when I was a kid. Yeah, totally. Yeah, and the other the other neat thing about this this film is, I think this was actually. I'd have to do the do the filmography, but I think this took. I think this was made around the time or after Mary Poppins because Disney was getting into a lot of. Um, yes, Mister CCDB, uh, we're talking about bed knobs and broomsticks and the Black Cauldron this evening. And thank you for tuning in. I appreciate it. Glad you're here. Uh, yeah, um, I think this was around the same time that they were doing Mary Poppins when they were mixing in live action and animation because that was a big part of Mary Poppins if both of you recall or anything. Um can I be like truthful as a British person here? Sure. I've never seen Mary Poppins. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> I'm probably the only British person who hasn't maybe. I don't know. <laughs> oh what oh, what you what, silent. What, what? <laughs> what Seriously, like it's never interesting. You never <laughs> you never see you I know the song. I, I can say supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. You've never <laughs> seen Mary Poppins? <laughs> yeah. Never how seen it. The, I, I could never sit through it. How in the, I could never no, do it. does not compute. Does not, does not compute. <laughs> oh, how God. can you have not I'm seen about Mary to get Poppins? <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not going to get kicked into the, to the chat. Speak for the dead. Hi. Welcome to the... Welcome to the stream where I'm having a nerve. I'm having a mental breakdown because Rokas has never seen Mary Poppins. What in the, the <laughs> what the what the deuce, dude? How can you okay, not have seen Mary Poppins? Oh my god! It's not. I don't like. It. I've never seen it, so not. Like I revoke. It, no. I am revoking <laughs> your nerd card. I'm revoking your geek card and your nerd card. You have to go watch it before I will give them back. I, I didn't see that on the um on the like the application form for being a nerd. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it is on the Jeez. card. It is on the Oops. geek and the nerd card both. You have had you have you, I put up seen bed knobs and broomsticks. <laughs> it is a times. prerequisite you have had to have seen Mary Poppins at least once. <laughs> CCTV, thank my you. My parents okay. failed me. Do you know what they did? Because every time I wanted to rent a movie from Blockbuster, they said no. <laughs> this no. is probably why. <laughs> and Shay, Shay is like, he's very. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Back on track. Back yeah, on track. Tell him to go fly a kite. Mr. CCTV, <laughs> tell him to go fly a kite. <laughs> Let's go. Okay. Back on track. Bed Dons and Broomsticks. This, yeah, honestly, this is a great movie. I cannot believe you have never seen Mary Poppins. <laughs> I've derailed this whole stream. If I had oh my, my camera on, my face would be... Speaker's <laughs> <laughs> like, dude, that's just not right. Even the chat's turned on me. Oh, my God. Please <laughs> let get back on track. Can you go back to talking okay. about Mary Poppins? All right. All right. Back on track. Bed knobs, bed knobs and broomsticks. You know, honestly, oh. this is a. There's something else that this kind of reminds me of in a lot of ways, and 
Rokas, if you say you've never seen this, we can no longer be friends. This very much reminds me of The Lion, Witch, and the Wardrobe in some ways, because you have the kids that are shipped off to the north and they're put in a, they're, they're, t they're fostered by another family or what have you. And obviously it's, no, well, okay, three kids, in, Ben Ups and Broomsticks, four kids in Blind Witch in the Wardrobe. So eh, a little bit of a shift. And fun fact, this book, this movie is actually based on a book. I don't remember the name of the book unless it's the same book. But I will say, I think, um, I think Disney did a good job of adapting the book or anything for this movie. And it's just, it's a fun, it is a, honestly, a fun little movie. It is very charming, very quaint. Although it has, it, it has Yahtzees, <laughs> actual real life Yahtzees, it's not the, uh, the fake kind on air on the internet, <laughs> but <laughs> well, they don't call them, they don't call them Yahtzees. They call them Germans. They just call them Germans. But this was a, this was a great, this was honestly a great little movie in my, my opinion. It's just, it's, it's charming. It's quaint. It's not. It's and it's a good musical. And the one thing that most of you will know about me, if you haven't already, I'm not a huge fan of musicals, just because I feel like it bogs down the story when you're singing all the time. So I feel like in this. <laughs> oh man. Okay. And you mute me. And you mute me. <laughs> of all people, you mute me. Yeah, because when I do it, it's funny. I'll mute myself. You don't have to mute yourself, yeah. Rokas. Guys, any particular parts of this that you that you want to talk about and anything in terms of uh, bed knobs and broomsticks? The animation, man. you got to talk about the animation because sure. that's what yeah. makes this movie magical, uh, honestly. I agree. Okay, you've got, like, you know, her, she's a witch, and she's like a mail-order witch of all things. You know, she, she got her degree through mail-order tutoring. <laughs> But, yeah, and the guy's a complaint to old fraud. <laughs> but uh, Mount of Elysium, greetings. Thank you for popping in. I appreciate it. Hope you're doing well, bud. And by the way, folks, Mountains of Elysium has official. I don't know how long he's had his channel, but he has a channel, so definitely go check that out. He's I done did some not stuff know on that. Babylon. Yeah, Mountains of Elysium has a channel, so go check that out. Shay, if you can get his channel in the chat and everything, so we can get him some more. Um, I subscribers I yeah i'll sub to you right now brother yeah so yeah hey so but yeah the animation this is really good i am i was very impressed with the animation for this movie and everything so um i would say this is some of disney's best i mean is it is i mean is it like upper 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 tier no but it is very very good so it's just the mix the mix of um the mix of real, you know, real life footage with the animation. I always thought that was, you know, they're playing yeah. soccer with the tunes, man. Yeah. And they aren't just any tunes. These are Disney tunes. So you recognize them. You know, the bear is the bear off of um, the jungle. No, and no that's not blue. That well, it's not, not blue. blue. It's not blue in name, but it's like. It is kind of. You know? uh, it looks like him. It looks like the bear off of um, uh, Robin Hood. You know, the no, lion, because the, like, the bear off of Robin Hood the and the bear off of a Jungle Book are look exactly the same. This bear is different. Oh, there's some alike. there's some they design look different. Like me when I was a kid, so well, yeah, I did to me as well. Um, and to the chat, Kathy Star, good evening, ma'am. Um, folks, just a FYI, after this stream around, I think Kathy, correct me in the chat if I'm wrong. Uh, Nine o'clock Central Time, Kathy is trying her review of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. So after we're done here, I will be popping over to hers to help her out with that. So make sure you tune in for that because we're going to be talking Buffy. And if you know me, folks, I love, 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 love Buffy. So make sure and tune in for that. And if you, so, but, um, Hey, Mountains of Elysium, dude. I'm subbed. I'm Bill. Do you ever need anything, dude? Hit me up on Twitter, dude. I'll be there. Yeah. Uh, Mountains of Elysium, ditto. Um, to say the, so Go so, ahead. sorry, you were just, um, yeah, and the, what I liked as well as the, the practical effects with how the, like, you know, when they do the spell and the armor comes to life and, mm -hmm. and goes and kicks some German butt, um, yes. yeah, that, I love that, like, how did they do that? Is there any, like, um, 
I would say probably they did it in the similar way that they did the Invisible Man and everything. If you've ever watched the special features on the Invisible Man where they had to go back and everything and they had the actors that were in the armor or whatever and they um, erased them in post-production. For yeah. lack of a better term, well, they had several. Thing, they they filmed different elements, and then they um they were able to uh, edit those elements together. weren't the weren't the red coats puppets though? Didn't they have wires? They uh, some- I did see that. Yeah, the I, rich, I don't I the, the red coats. I know because I remember them showing how they had like um they took um clothes hanger wired clothes hangers, straightened them out, and they had those in the arms. They had like meshing in the arm made out of clothes hangers. I remember that watching that in a making of at some point. And they, they that's that how they might been, that might have been the case. So that might have totally been the case. But yeah, I mean honestly, I that's one of my all time favorites for the simple fact that um the, the the animation on this and the, and the special effects work was also very good. I mean, I mean, I know that was green screen that they used for the parts where she's flying on her broom, but at the same time, um, it still looked good, even though you could you knew back in the in the back of your head, um, it was green screen, but it was very good green screen. I will say that much. And I really like the scene when they're playing um, for what I would call football, what you would call soccer. Um, when they're <laughs> yeah. playing uh, well, I call with, soccer. with the cartoon, and that, that, I just I remember ripping up laughing as a kid at some of the scenes of that. It's very slapstick. Well, and, yeah, I know. And uh, Max World Entertainment, greetings, my friend. Good to see you, bud. Glad you're here, Trey. I know you've got us dreaming a little bit, a little bit, bud. So greetings, Trey. Yeah. Oh, and um, Kathy, uh, Loki, I hope I hope you don't be offended. Uh, Kathy, no, no, Loki's, no Loki's not going to be able to make it tonight. He's been he's been working hard today online, so he's not going to be making it. So it's just going to be me. So, but I will catch the next one. I will. It's just I've had this is like my fourth stream today, Kathy. But I will catch the next one. So, but yeah, the, honestly, I will say this: <clears throat> the um. The technical work on this movie was actually very good for the time because I think this was what made in the 1960s, somewhere along in there. Yeah, yeah, that's what I yeah. think. Yeah, the 60s. So, I mean, it was impressive. We're um, okay. It was released in 1971. Oh, okay. Well. All right, my mistake. But still, it's good for that age. Yeah, yeah for, for that sentence. time. I mean, this was this was this was before they had the um, they had any type of computerization for anything really. I mean, because computerization really um, got into with uh, with Star Wars and everything with the computer the computer control cameras and so on. Well, heck, they yeah, haven't for- with Superman yet. So the flying on the broom, man, that was all. Yeah, that was all old school. So, but yeah, this was a, this was a, this was a great job that the that the cast that the crew did on this movie. I mean, as I said, this story has several different elements from other books or other works or anything. Like I said, with uh, Chronicles of Narnia, Wine Witch in the Wardrobe with Mary Poppins and so on. But at the same time, it has its own charm. It has its own um, unique feel and spirit to it and everything. And this obviously does take place in a different era and everything um, within the movie itself or anything. This is uh, England uh, during the during World War II. So, but um, yeah, the soccer match... I loved, yeah, uh, Rokas like you. I I laughed my butt off at there at the soccer match yeah. between all the different aliens, particularly that stupid ostrich. Like, why stick your head in the ground when you've got a lot? Of, well, I forget what it was coming charging at it and everything. I think it was a, the hippo or something that came charging at it, and it gets it gets bumped over, and I'm like, dude. Um- 
I can't quite remember, so correct me if I'm wrong, but who's mm -hmm. the referee again? Isn't the referee quite corrupt? <laughs> like, um, I actually know the referee is uh, David Tomlinson's character, Emil Brown. Oh, Emilius yeah, yeah. Brown. I yeah, remember uh, the referee Amelia being a bit of a joke. Brown um, was yeah, the, uh, because he had played soccer. And they kept running he over knew him. How, he knew all the rules. That was it, yeah. I just remember talking you. about the referee when I was a kid. Like, and he kept something funny about I it. kept the, running over him. <laughs> Go ahead, Loki. I remember they that. kept running over him. That's why. They kept running over him and trampling him. And he, he looked like he'd been through the ring. Yeah, and the, vultures, and the vultures came, the vultures kept coming out to try <laughs> and pick him, to pick him off so they could eat him. <laughs> I remember And that, every yeah. time he got up, they were like, they just slumped back very slowly, very depressed, very sad, and down in the dumps. See, that like, all crap. reminded there me. There goes our that, dinner. That all reminded me of, of Robin Hood. Because, you know, they had the vultures that were the, the archers or whatever the on the tower and Robin Hood. And yeah. they got them. Mm -hmm. You've got basically like a wannabe Baloo in Robin Hood, but he's not Baloo. And then you know you've got the lion, which is like Prince Prince Charles, or, and it, it, that's John. Prince John, yeah. Sorry, uh, mommy. Um, but it always it always harkened back for to me anyway. I saw those those animals that they were like this. Oh, it's Prince John off of Robin Hood. Oh, look, there's Baloo. Oh, because all the Disney characters. You know, I got fed that constantly when I was a kid. It was Disney movie after Disney movie after Disney movie. And Ooh, so when I saw Bedknobs and Broomsticks, and it's done by Disney, it was Disney's yeah. brother that did the animation, I, I believe. Um, I'll check mm. real quick, but I'm pretty sure it was Walt Disney's brother, Roy o. Disney. Hmm. He did the effects. This film was released prior to the death of Walt Disney's surviving brother, Roy o. Disney. Hmm. I yeah. was not aware of that. He was, the, he was the special effects, um, yeah, guru of the movie. Huh. Interesting. Thank you for that tidbit. I appreciate it. But it always harkened back, you know, Disney. And uh, to the chip. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> well, yeah, because Disney was if you wanted good animation or you wanted good or decent live action. Oh, um, this is a good show. <laughs> Just to remind everyone. <laughs> yeah. PSA. Thank you. And to the chat, <laughs> Superior Hero Reviews. Welcome, sir. Good to see you. Hope you're doing well. And see, uh, Mr. Uh, CCDV, uh, same art staff, 77 on Robin Hood and 33 on Ben Knobs and Broomstick. So, hmm, fascinating. Well, obviously, Disney knew how to keep, keep, keep a hold of good artists. So that tells you why for so long the art, the art style was that good. So... Yeah, we talked about but, that once when we were talking about um, that that Dragon yeah. Slayer game or Dirk, with Dirk the Daring that that came off. Yeah, the guy who did the like um, Sleeping mm -hmm. Beauty. Those mm -hmm. artists, they had a very specific style. There, that was all their oh, yeah. own. It was wonderful. It was absolutely wonderful art style. Mm -hmm. Totally. Yeah. Well, and you know. I will say something else that I really appreciate, even though at the time I didn't, the scene where they go to the the the, um, the street market. I loved that scene, even though I think some people might think, well, it, dry, it dried on for too long. Didn't but they do honestly? They did a song. It was called uh, Portobello Road and. Uh, Road, yes. Portobello Road. Portobello Road. Where the riches of ages are stowed. I don't want to get copyright strikes, so I won't sing anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, David Tomlinson actually sang that song. You had some really good. Um, yeah, it was named after a mushroom. It was named after a mushroom, Kathy. Yep. <laughs> and we did some harmonizing there. Wasn't that cool? Yeah, I try. I, I sometimes try. But yeah, um, and you had some very interesting dance number. You had a very interesting dance number and what have you. Yes, Kathy, you got it. Yep, that's it. Yep. Yep, she nailed it. Good job, Kathy. Good memory there, dear. Well done. <laughs> Bordello Road, yeah. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Yep. Bordello Road. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, well, there might be a few streets like that in, say, Las Vegas, or as the church lady would say, hell, hell, hell. <laughs> Sorry. I'm a little goofy tonight, folks. Don't ask me why. I just am. <laughs> but, yeah, and, you know, honestly... Uh, Rokas, as you mentioned, the the ending to this movie was actually very ingenious where she actually is able to do the whole substitute lo locomotion spell and bring all the suits of armor and everything to life. And basically <laughs> you've got the you've got the Germans with their guns just shooting, 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 and the, the army just keeps marching forward. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mr. C, yeah. yes. Definitely Mr. wasn't Bravo leading the charge, was it? <laughs> So, but yeah, that was a that was a great little moment there, especially with the with the German Colonel. He's like, "Crap, we're being beaten back by empty suits of armor. Run!" So, but yeah, guys, any anything else you want to cover in terms of um, bed knobs and broomsticks? Oh, there is one thing. How cool is it that they traveled on a bed? Yeah. Talk, ab Actually, talk yeah. about inventive traveling. It's, <laughs> yeah. Because, <laughs> because um, especially as a kid, imagine that, like if your bed could go somewhere, because, you know, I don't know, it's, uh, yeah, real imaginative and it's just, just, it's just fun. It's a lot of fun. That's the, uh, that's the um, main thing. Trey, you too, bud. You have a good night, my friend, and uh, we'll catch you on the flip side. And the good and success, kapla, with your stream tonight, my friend. So, oh yeah, Trey, right. kill him, kill him dead, get them all, <laughs> kill them all, take them all down. You can do great. Buddy. I like how the kids generally warmed up to it as well as the yeah. time went on. Like at first, he said they didn't like it. He thought she was a bit strange or a bit weak. I'd, I'd say like. And then it was oh no overly strict, and then it, then he found the weaknesses that they can blackmail her about being a witch. Well, they were the robber. Um, they were the robber and take her stuff and then take off. Yeah, um, <laughs> pretty dark. Quick, uh, Tapia, <laughs> I have put the stream both on the Discord and I have put it on Twitter. So pick a link, any link. <laughs> if you want to come on, my dear, by all means, you are welcome. You know that. So. One thing I thought I'd throw out there, up sure. until 1996, this mm -hmm. movie was an hour and 19 minutes long. Mm -hmm. There is no director's cut, but after 1996, it is now, uh, hold on one second, 139 mm -hmm. minutes long. Yeah, because it's an hour and 45 minutes long. But it so. wasn't. In 1971, when it released, it was an hour and 18 mm -hmm. minutes long. Okay, in 1996, when it was re-released, it was 139 minutes long. It does not say director's cut. It does not say anything like that. But when they mm -hmm. were when Disney let it out of the vault in 96, suddenly it was 139 minutes long. So they added 20 minutes to the movie that was mm -hmm. cut originally because production went off and on. This is this started in the early 1960s. The production for the movie started really? in the early 1960s. It was put on hold when they thought they were going to do Mary Poppins, and then they were fighting over Mary Poppins. It went back into production, and then it stalled once they got the rights to do Mary Poppins. And then after mm -hmm. Mary Poppins was done, they went back to bread knobs and broomsticks. But 20 minutes of the movie was lost, and then suddenly reintroduced in 96. Even though it doesn't wow. say director's cut, anything released after 96 is essentially the director's cut of Bed Doms and Broomsticks. So if you saw this as a kid, most likely you're going to get 20 minutes now that you never saw when you were a kid. Yeah, um, probably did. And that explains, Ambassador, why you thought it was released in the 60s as well. Yeah. Um, Kathia, I put it on the Twitter, on the Ambassador League stream chat. It's in there, and I also put it in the stream links and everything on discord so you're I'll, probably not in the right pew i'll send her one i'll copy it yeah. i can copy no, it when i got my phone no just... it's loki it's in there she's just got she's just gotta go to the right room that's all okay. so Ooh. well while we're waiting for kathy to get in here folks uh just a couple of things real quick uh, this coming Friday, me and my good friend here, uh, Loki, we're going to be doing a double header. We're going to, I'm going to be on his mornings of mischief Friday morning. So be sure to tune in for that. And then of course, 
Friday afternoon at 4 p.m., myself, Loki, and Speaker for the Dead are going to be reviewing uh, Highlander. So that'll be 4 p.m. Central Time, so be sure to tune in for those. And I will also be going on to Orange Hat Reviews uh, stream this Friday night at 7 Central, 8 Eastern, when we're going to be debating um, a couple of, a couple of uh, he's going to be competing his uh, Debater Versus series. Well, his versus series, and we're going to be debating who would win a, a war between the the aliens from the alien universe and the Mandalorians from uh, Star Wars. So be sure to tune in for all of those. It's a really cool idea. Did you ever? Did you ever play Mortal Kombat X, Ambassador? I never have. I honestly, I I never could do fighting games like it all. Well, they've got so. the aliens and the predators in that, and it's cool. Really. Yeah, because it's like the aliens take over Outworld. So they invade where Shao Kahn and all the bad guys wow. are from. And there's, cool. yeah, dude, it's really cool. It's a really cool little thing. And here she is. Katie, Hello. good evening. Hello. <laughs> Sorry. No, you're oh, fine. Good evening, ma'am. I had to find it. <laughs> I had to go mm -hmm. out and <laughs> I found it, though. Good. Glad you, could, glad good you, glad you found it. How's everybody in the chat? I um so, right. I'm I'm bursting with excitement, Ambassador, because you mentioned Portobello Road, and you guys, I, I I'm 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 I don't know. I guess maybe because um I I love history. Um, mm -hmm. I'm I'm shocked that you guys didn't know that Portobello Road was a real. It's a real marketplace. It's been around since the Middle Ages, um, and that's where. You know, just it's like a flea market. Uh, we would call it like a flea market. Yeah, everybody can Everybody comes, all of their items, and mm -hmm. you get everything secondhand. That's the reason why the song says, um, "It's the place where the riches of ancients are stowed. Anything and everything a chap unload, you can find it on Portobello Road because that's exactly mm -hmm. what it is. It's just a huge stretch of flea market in the middle of London. It's been around since yeah. Londoninium." So it was around even before Britain was Britain. And so there's a hmm. lot of myth and there's a lot of, there's a lot of, well, I like these movies spe specifically because it's very, it's very myth based. It's very pagan for me because you get to see a lot of these elements, even though most people don't know it. There's so much myth steeped in bed knobs and broomsticks. And of course, oh, Black yeah. Cauldron, obviously that's a, Cel that's a, a Celtic story. Um, but um, bed noms and bed noms and broomsticks, um, just so so great, such a such a great movie. Oh yeah. Sorry, I am. I I love this movie. Angela Lansbury. I mean, she, she just did such a magnificent job with that character. She did from beginning to end. She, I mean, she just rocked being a well. I would I would call it like a modern witch. Unless she was. A modern mm -hmm. witch for her time period, and it's yeah. extraordinary to see that, you know, because during that, you know, during I think during the same period, didn't we have like um, Bewitched, and um, oh, there was another one. Yeah, uh, I think I think you could witched. probably categorize uh, I Dream of Jeannie in there too. Yeah, you could because uh, both yeah, of those was, were like the sixties, the seventies like, was was a time yeah. period where. Yeah, Sorry, totally. I, I'm just really excited. So if I over talk to you, I'm really, really excited. <laughs> no, Nikki, you're fine. You know, when she mentioned about Portobello Road, it kind of mirrors um, Wall Street. I don't know if you ever heard about that or not. If you ever, if you read about hmm. Wall Street, the first colony on the island in New York had a long back wall to the encampment and that's where all the produce and all the items and everything that would go to sell. And that was their wall street that was the wall they had all their produce on and everything that's and exactly hence that's why we have wall street now is because that that was where the, the they sold everything yes, because because that demand, was the so. custom in rome well I, i'm not sure how the how the names is but the, the culture of locations like that are the same where you've got it's lined up on a street, but it's going mm -hmm. to be in a place near the city gates because what you've got is is you've got farmers and uh, you know coming in from the country 
to sell mm -hmm. their merchandise. And that those big market days happened, I think like four or six times a year. And they were big deals because some of these people were coming in. Remember, this is before horse and carriage. This is your, you are walking from your farm. You might, it might be two days where you've collected all your things off your farm, all your, all your extra stuff. All right, just before winter or um, right before spring when you need to replenish your stores for the hunger gap, you have to go to town. And so you have to sell all that stuff. And you're, you really, you don't know what you're going to get. And that culture is the same. And it's been that way for centuries. And mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's exactly as Loki described it. It's generally just inside the city gates. It's going to be along a wall. And that's oh, yeah. where your farmers and your city folk are going to converge Mm -hmm. Sorry, I get excited. I'm so sorry. Okay, this yeah, is relevant. You, I, I swear. I swear. If you sorry, if you sorry, I'm gonna mute you. I did it to Loki. I'll do it to you. <laughs> sorry. All right, that's it. You're muted. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> She's kind of with the I'm Romans. sorry, guys. I'm in a mischievous <laughs> mood this evening. Don't ask I, me why. And, oh, it's because I'm here. <laughs> it's because oh. I'm here. No this mischievous one is here. Cap your energy. Cap it. <laughs> you brought up Rome. But, um, no, no, it's um, the energy is welcome. Yes, totally. <laughs> we, we were running out of things to say about this movie. So. Well, we were going to just move on to the next one, but I, hey, I, I'm okay. Okay, so the bed ahead. thing. The bed thing. That is... um. That is allegory because what you're talking about is you're talking about a transition. A bed is a portal. It is a transportation device because a sleeping person is transported in their dreams into the dreamscape to different worlds. This is an ancient, ancient belief. Okay. And it's represented so well in bed knobs and broomsticks. It's amazing. It's fascinating. And here's another thing to hide an ancient, powerful artifact in the dreamscape. Come on, how cool is that? We're all D&D players. We play video games. How cool is this? Yeah, I would agree. Yeah, because... Yeah. Hmm. Interesting point of view. Thank you, Katia. Good job. You get a gold, you get a gold star and a cookie. <laughs> so. Okay, I'm sorry for taking up your... Let's. We can move um, on to Black Cauldron if you want, because i got lots to say about that, too. <laughs> Kathia, I swear, if the word sorry is uttered again in this stream, I'm going to mute everybody in the stream and just go home. Let me just apologize on her behalf. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I just wow. get so dang excited about these movies, Ambassador. I really it's okay. do. It's okay. All right. Well, Let's move on to Black Cauldron because honestly, this is one that I really want to dive into because this is honestly a really, this is very much a lost Disney gem or a forgotten Disney gem. And people have said, Oh, it's too dark. It's too scary. Kids won't like it. Um, I watched it as a kid and I loved it. I liked the fact it was dark and it was scary. But I was, I'm weird. I'm slightly warped. Man, I'll, tell you what, I'll tell you what. I raised my kids on real fairy tales, Ambassador, where Cinderella cut or Cinderella's sisters cut off bits of their feet to fit into Cinderella's shoe to try to trick the prince. Okay. Ooh. If Black Cauldron scares kids, it should, it should. Because life is not rainbows and cookies. It's just no. not. And no, I don't, not. I really honestly need, now obviously, I, well, all I'm saying here is, is balance, you know, and that's just yeah. my opinion as far as child rearing is concerned. Yeah, no, I, I'm somewhat the same, not as far as the cut feet, <laughs> but um, like a few years ago. Um, well, that's the original version. My, my girlfriend didn't want um, her, her daughter, my stepdaughter, to watch The End of King Kong. She'd been watching King Kong. She didn't want to see the end because she knew she'd cry. And I was like, no, she's got to see it. She's got to see that yeah. there ain't always a happy ending in movies. She did cry, but she got over it. <laughs> and she's. You know, she's now got a connection to that movie, so mm -hmm. you know, it's, well, and, it's the way it is. Well, the thing I, the there is there is so much about the Black Colony that I absolutely positively love. I 
I mean, I love the story. The animation is so good. The voice cast is outstanding. I mean, you can't go wrong with John Hurt as the as the as the Horned King. I mean, that is that guy has a has a voice that can just chill you to the bone or make you feel very very happy in a lot of ways. And God's the, rest is good soul. Yes, indeed. Wholeheartedly. Not to mention you have a magic pig. You have a magic pig. Who thought of who thought of that? I mean, obviously the person who wrote the book that this movie is based oh, well, on thought of that. But you have a pig that has the gift of foresight. Figure that one out. Well, that's because no, it was that is that is from the story, and that's a representation of the blood pig, the sacrificial pig. You oh. sacrifice the pig and you put it in a bowl because you have to have blood, sanctified blood, in order to pull the resurrected soldiers out of the cauldron. Okay, that's an interesting insight. Um, yeah, one thing I liked about this movie, like when I was a kid, term. I don't know if you guys in the US have ladybird books, you know, the, the, um, the like a publishing company for kids' books. It reminded me of the old school ladybird books, um, just like the, the way they're drawn and such. Um, I can't believe I've never seen, got to see this one as a kid. I've never heard of it until today, but I, I think I would have loved this as a kid, especially like the villain in it. Oh, is, yeah. I love that villain. And yeah, I, I didn't get to see how it ends, unfortunately. I only finished watching it, uh, what I could, a little while ago. But um, I just, his voice, and I don't know, it, it just has this. Um, I can see why people would say it's scary, but maybe in the 80s, not so much now, I don't think. No, because honestly, this movie... Well, the Horned God is a god of an underworld. The Horned yeah. King. He, he is... Yeah, the Horned King. He's, a, he's an underworld god. He's like Hades, Pluto, and Hell. That bowl belongs to him. It's his, That's his bowl. That's his power well, in actually, the... that bowl. That's the reason why he wants us to dang back. Well, if you remember the in the in the story, Sorry. Kathy, the the cauldron actually belonged to another king who was actually very very wicked, very evil, and um, I think it was a group of sorcerers or witches or something that along those king lines. That bowl. Yeah, who they they imprisoned the. It was the, one uh, of. The... Hmm. Yeah. I was going to say it was a son of Puith. Okay. Um, and if anybody knows anything about uh, the, it's a big long word. It starts with an M. It's about Celtic myth. Okay. It's like mm, Madame Mogan, Nogan, Negan, something. I can never get that name right. But it's one of his sons. And what he, what it was is, is he just thought that he deserved a kingdom. So he used the knowledge of Puith to enter into the underworld. And he stole that bull from the horned king and brought it into this realm. That, but bull belongs to him. Well, I mean, myth, myth speaking. But obviously they couldn't put that into the movie itself. And so they had to kind of re, they had to, they had to kind of write around it because they couldn't present that myth face on because it's a huge story. It's a giant, 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 giant story. And it's really good. The way that they rewrote it, the way that they rewrote this myth for the movie is n nothing short of amazing, in my opinion, because it still keeps with the intent. It still keeps with the message. And you, you're not really, if you're just watching the movie, you're not really missing anything. But you wouldn't know that you were missing anything unless you've read the myths. Well, and so the, it's well. This the movie and everything is based also on a book that was called the uh, the Legends of Perdane or Pertain or something like that, um, because that's what the one kid and everything keeps talking about. Uh, Taran, who's the pig keeper, and. This this is this movie. Uh -huh. I'm guessing maybe whoever wrote the book might have had reference to the myth that you're talking about, or the myths that you're talking about, Katheus. So, but you know, this is a very un. In many yeah. ways, this movie is a very unconventional um, 
film in terms of what Disney has done and everything in the past because the darkest film we had gotten to date from Disney, and this was a live action, was in fact The Black Hole. And that was a very, very unconventional movie. And we may cover that movie somewhere down the road. But this was this was different for... Uh, well, I don't know. That depends upon your... Okay. Well, I I'm mean, not Snow saying... White's pretty I'm, dark. I'm not saying that... Okay. I am not saying that Disney has never done anything, anything like this before. But there's a very dark tone and temp tenor to this film throughout. As with some of the other movies, you have bits and pieces that are very dark and foreboding. And I think whereas the majority of the other animated Disney films have been fairly lighthearted, they haven't been overly serious. The stakes have not been, they've been big, but in terms of Black Cauldron, uh, you get a very different tone with this film. In, the fa in fact, that pretty much from the onset, the stakes for the world are huge. Whereas with the other Disney works, the stakes kind of escalate over time. And not to mention you've got mm. you've got you've got the the hero and the heroine and everything as I would have loved to see where uh Elanway came from. I would have loved to see her kingdom, everything where she came from. And I will say this, I like the mm. menstrual fluter. Fluter Flim. Man, what a, what an odd little <laughs> character. So, but yeah, this was this movie. It really sticks in the back of your mind, in particularly with the art style, because the art style for this is kind of it kind of stands out in ways or anything from what Disney had done in the past with their art style, particularly with the darker, more sinister elements, particularly with the. Uh, Horned King's Castle with the design of the cauldron and whatever, mm -hmm. and a lot of the uh, the background and what and whatnot for this. So well, you got to bring up APT if you're going to talk about the art style for this movie. APT APT is animated photo transfer process. This was the oh, very okay. first movie to use this process, and it was one of the last movies huh. to use this process. Really? What happened was they almost completely eliminated the hand inking and color process by hand, which means the machine okay. did all of that. Okay. They, they used a special machine that would take it and put it on celluloid and then put it into high contrast of the film. And the problem with that was it faded within months. It was fading off of the lithographs. So there's no yeah. way to like remake. There's no way to go back and redo this ever again wow. because it's all gone. The process they used back in the fifties would have been completely replaced by this. If it had worked like it was supposed to work. The mm -hmm. second thing, this is the very first animated movie that had CGI. The cauldron really? is CGI. Yeah, yeah, I could the see cauldron, that. The cauldron, the bubbles, yeah, the did. boat, the floating orb of light, all of that is computer-generated imagery. Third, mm -hmm. they used actual live footage in this movie. Believe it or not, the mm -hmm. animator Don Paul used live-action footage of dry ice to create steam and smoke coming out of the cauldron. So you've got three elements, three things that had never been seen before. You had a, the APT process, you had computer generated imagery, and you had live action footage all working together in one movie. Wow. Dang. So this film should be wow. more popular. I didn't know about the, the, the ice. Yeah. I mean, it's one of those things, you know, you, you hear about it and you're like, well, that's cool, but you know, it's boring. I know facts, you know, when, when you're talking no, about honestly, Well, here, here's the thing that is actually. These were things I never knew about. So, Loki, thank you for sharing. And for anybody who will catch us on the flip side, if you have this movie, go watch it. If you have Disney+, Plus, it's on there. Go watch it. I mean, if you think about it and everything, this, both these movies uh, in several ways were kind of cutting edge or innovative in terms of how the um, on the technical side of things. 
I mean, the stories are good and everything. Don't misunderstand me. I mean, I very much enjoyed the story for Black Cauldron. But the whole technical aspect of this is actually fascinating. So, Loki, thank you for sharing that. Appreciate no, it. You're very welcome. It's it's just one of those little things you wonder why you see it. You know, you see Black Cauldron, you wonder why it's it's it does have it's radically different. The colors stand out more. The that art too. style is different. Yeah, and you're like, wow. Okay, why did they the, why did they diverge this way on this movie? Well, they were trying out all these new technologies. They were pushing the boundaries and trying out these new technologies. And it fits the movie because it's meant to be something otherworldly anyway. Yeah. So yes, very much so. Um. Yeah, because as I mentioned, this both this Black Cauldron was based on a novel or a series of books and everything. And I would have loved to have seen them continue doing some of the other stories. But unfortunately, from what I understand, this movie wasn't particularly profitable for Disney, which honestly is kind of sad because it was so innovative. It was so cutting edge. It was so ahead of its time. So it very much for me it wasn't appreciated. It was yes, Kathy, I would agree with that. It wasn't appreciated for its time, and that's honestly that's that's a sad thing. But the great thing is now, the great thing is now with the with home video and especially with Disney Plus now, those of us that know this movie, we can share it with our friends. We can, if we have kids, we can share it with our kids or our grandkids or whatever, and say, hey, here is this great. Disney movie that you may have never heard of. Yeah, you've heard of Aladdin and you've heard of Sleeping Beauty and all these other things, but here is something unique for Disney. And that's why I've been doing these streams over the last couple of months. And I think it's to bring attention to these, as I've called them, forgotten gems from the Disney vault and everything. Mm -hmm. And the, that is honestly, I think, something well, that we people. If we hadn't had Black Aldrin. We never would have gotten the Little Mermaid. I don't know. Yeah, the Little Mermaid and Black Cauldron are directly linked. I would agree with that. So, because Sorry. Little Mermaid, in a lot of ways, is very dark itself, particularly with the whole aspect of Ursula and what have you, and um, you know, I'll you know, I'll say this. The design of the Horn King was very, very good, but it was really John Hurt's voice that really brought that character to life. And I think he did a, I think he did honestly a stand-up job in this film. And you had, uh, you also had, I think it was Freddie Jones who was in this. I can't remember if he played Doblin or, 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 or yeah, I think that was the name of him, the the guy that. Uh, Tarn uh, worked for, or if he was Fluber, I can't, Fluber Flim, but I can't remember which. And I'll say this for comedic characters, Fluber Flim, he was a quirky fella. He was a wandering minstrel, but he was a min he was a very unique minstrel because every time he told a fib or he told a lie, a string on his lyre broke. And I'll, that's honestly, I love, I love that aspect of that character. I really do. They use that to. Oh, never mind, actually, not on your stream. But there's a bit of an adult joke in there with the witches when his um, when his heart <laughs> when it broke. <laughs> if you go back and watch it. Oh yeah, the three witch, the three witches. Yeah. We got one trying to kiss him, and then it breaks and springs up. <laughs> so, yeah, I, yeah, I, 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 I get. Yeah, I, yeah, that was that was. A, I do remember that joke. That was a good one. And what and, was with the um, creature that? I don't know what kind of animal. Well, it's obviously not oh, based on real animal. Yeah, Gergi? he's like a terrier and a monkey. <laughs> I don't know impressive. what the heck Gurgi was supposed to be. I don't think we ever get an explanation as to what he is or anything. But he's so adorable and he's so he's 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 annoying, but in a cute and, and, and playful way, not in a Jar Jar Binks esque type of way. <laughs> And I'll say this: I think they, I think there was a little bit of inspiration for for Gergi with from Gollum, in the way that he talked. I don't know yeah. if any of you, I don't know if any of you got that connection either. But I very much got the idea that Gergi no, had a little I bit. Of, say that again, Katie. Because of the uh, the Hobbit movie, I said I did because of the Hobbit oh, okay. movie. 
the, oh, the, the animated an- version in the 70s? Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Because the Black was... Cauldron and the Hobbit, those are connected too. How so? I think with uh, a couple of the voice actors and some of the artists. Really? Well, yeah, because John Hurt did. No, I'm thinking of Lord of the Rings, the Hobbit. Aragorn was in the Hobbit. Never mind. Ooh, excuse me. So, but yeah, guys, um, anything, um, anything you want to bring up about Black Cauldron? Anything that we haven't touched on already? Um, I think you touched on it a little bit, but I love some of the uh, background scenery and art in this movie. Oh yeah, it's some of yeah, it's just de- astonishing to look back at. And, yeah. Yeah, the uh, the yeah. Well, as Loki mentioned, well, this was done on lithographs, and I won't lie, I would love to have had a lithograph of the um, of the of the Horned King's fortress because honestly, it was it yeah, it was broken down and decrepit, but it was a very it was a very cool design, and the artwork on it was very very well done. I will not lie, yeah. it was it was exceedingly well done. So, Katie, were you going to say something? Um, I was um, trying to decide whether or not, um, because I might be getting another, um, I might be getting another movie uh, mixed up with Black Cauldron, but isn't there, is there a moment in the movie where the princess sings in the dark? Um, I don't, I don't think there's actually any musical numbers yeah i Cauldron. literally just watched it and there was no music guy singing for what i remember yeah like, there was no music there was no uh, no there was there was no whistling or singing like whistling no. or, or anything like that that's no, then, it, then, it, then that has to be, i'm yeah. this was a rarity for for disney this is one of their few non-musical animated features In because fact, they referenced of, it yeah. Um, kind of broke the fourth wall a bit when they asked the witches if they go to make music. Uh, uh, they offer the harp thing to yeah. uh, for the witches, and they say, "Oh, we want music. We make the birds tweet, <laughs> something like that." So it's just kind of like um, they, they a bit of self-awareness. They slammed it. The critics slammed it for that too. They said it wasn't light-hearted, light-hearted like the other Disney films, and there was no singing. It's one of the reasons why uh, it got bad reviews. Was it, it was not your average Disney movie. No, it's very experimental. It? You can see that from, like you said, with the animation. Right. And yeah. Well, and the speaker brings style. up a speaker brings up a good point. The guy that voiced Gandalf in the anime and Hobbit movie did did the uh, intro. Okay, did the intro for Black Cauldron? Okay. Yeah, I did not His know that. Was recognizable but, to me. Uh, did wonder where speaker, was. thank you. Appreciate that. Good, good catch, my friend. So, yeah, that was, um, okay. you know. I can understand where some people may say, well, this isn't what we're used to from Disney and we don't like it. But I think for those of us, and I think for a lot of people now, uh, are going back to this and saying, Disney was trying to do something different and there is an appreciation for it. I mean, there, this yeah. movie has, and I think in at least a small way, has grown very much a cult following and everything within the Disney fan base. And everything mm-hmm. Because... The movie yeah. itself, it has a very different, like I said, it has a very different tone. It has a different tenor to it. It's not your atypical, lighthearted Disney yeah. musical animated feature. This doesn't have a music, any musical numbers. It has no songs or anything. And it's... It was cutting edge for its time, and I would say even now... It's, it may not be cutting edge, but it is very unique and everything in terms of what we get anymore from in, ter- in terms of animated features from Disney. I would put this right alongside, yes. I would say, I would, I would put this right alongside the Emperor's New Groove in terms of very unique storytelling and what have you, because Aside from the opening of Emperor's New Groove, we don't really get a musical number of any sort because they put it right at the beginning. And even the musical number is very out of character for what Disney usually does. I mean, for heaven's sakes, you've got Tom Jones doing the musical number, and I love it. I mean, I would very much put those two Mm -hmm. movies side by side and say... Disney was trying to do something different here, and I I appreciate the effort. So, 
Well, anytime you're trying to well, take it did, it did start. It, it, go ahead, Cave. Yeah. Well, I was I was gonna say that it that this movie opened up a door of a specific style of a cartoon animate animated movie because you've got you yes you have a black carbon and you have the hobbit too but you also have the last unicorn is also kind of in this genre as well oh, yeah okay and totally. that's the reason why I got to, um because in the last unicorn is the scene where the princess is in the darkness and she's singing to keep the goblins away because that has myth meaning that's a that's magic that's when uh, there's a specific type of magic user who sings the magic into existence, okay, and that th th that is um, uh, something I was gonna I was gonna bring up because I had mistaken it for the for the black cauldron. But that aside, that aside, you ha you do have a series of animated movies here that are in this style, and for whatever reason, because I I enjoyed all of those as a kid um and also two movies that fall in that same style which is those two disc world animated movies i keep going on about soul music and the weird sisters all the same type of animation all the same type of storyline it's uh, it, it's in that bracket and these cartoons these animated movies are so underrated and they're so good i don't understand why it's not getting any attention especially nowadays in the modern era when we have the crap crappiest thundercats i have ever seen in my whole life so there you go <sighs> sorry <laughs> tell you how you really feel katia no, Kathy, no, Kathy, I'm not throwing shade at you. I have not, I have not seen the new Thundercats, and honestly, I don't really have any interest to see the new Thundercats. Truth be told, so. But yeah, this, I applaud everyone. No, really <laughs> I applaud everybody that worked on this film, and I, and honestly, folks, for those of you that are watching this currently, who will catch us on the uh, the replay, if you have not. Watch the Black Cauldron, or you haven't watched Bed Knobs and Broomsticks. Go back and rewatch these. If you've got kids or grandkids, show them to your kids. Really. Ooh, speaker brings Thanks up a good one. Yeah, yeah. Watership Down. Although Ooh. I've never. That's and, a and Kate, Oh, and Kathy, a quick thing. It makes me uh, no, Kathy, you're good. Um, I said a quick thing. Uh, the missus loves Last Unicorn. And I actually got, I just back, I think it was last year, I sat down, We I watched it with her. And I like it too, very much so. Do you want to talk about Dark for a movie, mm -hmm. for a kid's movie, yeah. Watership Down? Yeah, like Watership that. Down, very, very dark. Yeah. But I mean, like I said, well. like I said, I've never, I've never seen it personally, but I've heard it is very dark. I've heard it is very grim and everything. And, you know... <sighs> That was something that was very. Tom Bombadil. Oh, I love Tom Bombadil. Sorry, that's I, I interrupted. Go ahead. <laughs> Speaker, <laughs> shame on you. Oh, dang. Well, and this this is a good. This is kind of a good. This is a good springboard for a little bit of a topic that I've been wanting to talk about. This is as good as time of, as any and everything. The fact that in the eighties and in the seventies, especially. You had a law. You had a very. You had a long string, of very. Okay, I don't want to say very, but you had a string of darker toned animated features for kids, yeah. like Black Cauldron, like Wireship Down, Secrets of Nam, The Last Unicorn, um, the yeah, the, no the, the Hobbit. <laughs> the Hobbit, the Lord of the Rings, the Return of the King, the animated versions of those, and so on. And you know, you just you don't seem to get that much anymore. Yeah, so. I agree. There's people just seem to be kind of scared to do that for uh, kids yeah. now. Like the, the brands Ooh. are scared to do it because they feel like they'll get too much negative backlash and it will affect the market share um, and their image and whatnot. So. Yeah. Yeah, and we should take more risks. I really do. I do too. And to the chat, purple lady, welcome. Thank you for tuning in. I'm glad you're here. 
And um, that's one I'm not familiar with, honestly. I've never heard of Plague Dogs, but then again, I i mean, yeah, I know the 80s. I grew up then, but there are some things that have just slipped underneath my radar or slipped between the cracks that I've never heard of. So, um, I mentioned Discworld and Purple Nation. That's funny. <laughs> Yeah, because the two of you did a uh, did a stream on that not too long ago. I actually caught the biggest part of that. That was a good. Uh, that was a good. Uh, that was a good conversation the two of you had. So, but yeah, a broadcast. You, you bring up a very. You bring up a good point because anymore, a lot of these studios, and th this is not me going on a rant or a tear, folks. Please don't think I'm going negative. I'm not. But in the '80s and the '70s, and even in t uh, to a point into the '90s. You had studios that were willing to take risks with animated features, and nowadays you just don't see it that much, except for and I will give credit where credit is due with the DC animated movies that they release on v video and so on. Those are, I think, along in that along in that same vein and everything, a very dark, very mature um, animated features and so on, but. I would love, honestly, to see <laughs> speaker. No, we don't. We don't. We don't mention Star Chaser here. God, oh having, my word! I'm having flashbacks to when I used to watch a nostalgia critic, and he did a <laughs> he did a video on that. Ah, no, no, speaker. How could you? Shame on you. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I would honestly, I would love to see a studio or something take a chance and actually do take some sort of novel, a, a, a fantasy novel or a fantasy book or something and turn it into an animated series and have it be dark, have it be heavy, have it be not so much for kids, but be somewhat where maybe say a young adult like teenagers or something that could that could uh, handle heavier stuff because i think that's something that's very sorely lacking from cinema and movies and television nowadays guys any your any, any thoughts on on that yeah not just in um yeah like i said not just in movies but in television as well like uh, I'd, I'd imagine like hey arnold things like that very dark gritty mm -hmm. cartoons for kids which touch, touch on things like mental health issues and and their socioeconomic problems um and kids who watch that remember that and read deeper into it now and actually reflect on that so you know th there needs to be more of that like with watership down with black cauldron um there's something you can look back on and reflect and learn from as i have with star wars um and many of us have with many other things. We don't, yeah, I feel that's something that's hugely missing today. Like, if I want to show something like that to my kids, I have to go back to the 80s, 90s, and 70s. Yeah. I would wholeheartedly agree with you. I yeah, really I think do. Pirates of Dark War. Ooh. It, it, Dang, it was, it, it, it was, it had pretty dark. Well, you know, hey, I like it. And, you know, Reboot, even though it wasn't in the same style, Reboot got pretty dank, too. I mean, they're, especially there towards the uh, later seasons mm -hmm. when, um, when, um, the, when, um, oh, geez, Nessie, the, the, his name is gone. But he went out into the internet and then he came back and he had changed and he was like web security or something. I don't, I, it's been a while since I've mm -hmm. seen it. But yeah, Pirates of Dark Water got really dank, and that was that was eighties. I loved that. I did uh, too. Eighties early. Did it? Did, uh, uh, did it? Ninety one, ninety two. Something. Yeah, it was in the nineties. There's a late nineties one actually, which I watched. Re I rewatched recently, which I loved as a kid, and I thought it was actually kind of dark. Um, Tarzan, the animated version, oh, was no. actually kind of dark. Was <laughs> hmm. I don't remember that one. The animated version of Animal Farm. Yes, purple for the win! Holy cow, that one was. Have you have you guys seen that one? I I can't story. say that I have. Oh yeah, it got real dark. I was not aware of that. 
this really wasn't. So. Oh, mercy. Okay, somebody say something. <laughs> something, 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 something. Something, <laughs> something, 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 something. Dark Maybe I could get this way coming. You can sing Bibbidi Boop Bop. That's in that same style. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's in that same style. Charlotte Swift art. got dank. You know the dark art, the 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 art you see in the, the darkness, and you know if you put if you put like um, Jungle Book and Sleeping Beauty on one side, and then you put this movie on the other, the mm -hmm. difference is night and day. Oh yeah. And, um, as, as you were saying, you know they took chances, they were expanding, they were taking that leap forward in technology, and this was not your average Disney movie. And there are movies that came after this that were not your average Disney movie. And you can't pigeonhole a movie just by what company it comes from. You know, a lot of us don't like some of the stuff coming out of LucasArts, but some of us like the Mandalorian. Some of us don't like what they're yeah. doing. Now. So, you know, it, 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 it's there has to, they have to take chances. Sometimes they, those, do. Those, they don't succeed, you know, but they still, they still take chances and you got to applaud them for that. I, I love the art style in this movie, even though this I wasn't all with the story. I love the art style in this movie, and that can say, yeah. you know, that can really say that's a Jim Henson thing. That's why I love Jim Henson. So, I hated so Farscape fresh. when it started. I hated Farscape when it started, but as I continued to watch Farscape, I grew to love Farscape because of the same the, here. The the art and the the sets and the creatures and everything. So as something gets older, sometimes it gets better, like wine. You know, and yes. you have it, you hold a more appreciation for it. You know, some mm -hmm. things like The Last Jedi, they're crap and they'll always be crap. But <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, you know, <laughs> but they, at least they took a chance. They did something different. And the uh, Rise of yeah. Skywalker. Yeah. 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 At least it felt mythological. Like, uh, I can say that, but that's about it. Um, and am I the only one with Black Cauldron? I don't know if this is just me, but I got a bit of a Peter Pan feel from it. I don't know why. Um, um, no, I think it's just not really. Dressed or something. I don't know. Oh, you talking about the the the, the one kid, Taran? Yeah, he just reminds me of Peter uh, Pan. Um, <laughs> no, but no, honestly, I didn't get that feel. But hey, everybody has a different perspective on it. So. Yeah, maybe it's I don't know. Just uh, I think I feel like I may have seen Black Cauldron as a kid. And I saw Peter Pan as again. It just feels like some there's some crossed wires there or something, you know. Mm. So it's like that, that might that might totally be the case. So, so well, guys, I think we've pretty much dissected and whatever these two movies, unless there's something else y'all want to talk about in terms of these movies. My thing was the art style for Black Hole. Yeah. yeah, yeah, same. Yeah, totally same here. So, yeah, I look forward to showing the Black Hole to my kids. Good. Um, yeah, I think I should say and that. I enjoy it. You have well the um, the uh, the there is a supposedly there is a real uh, version of the Black Cauldron. Um, it's. It's carved. It's highly decorated. I believe it's in the British Museum, but uh, it's got a big long word. Starts with a G. Don't make me say it. <laughs> but it's got. Um, it's that's that's the that's where that myth comes from. Is it's not just a, a Celtic myth. It's 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 older than that because there's there are several. Um, types of bowls or cauldrons that it, when properly activated, will resurrect dead soldiers. Like there's one Odin has one in the Viking myths, believe it or not. And then there's uh, this one. And they, it basically it all comes from the same place, which is like, you know, your Saxons and your Vikings and your Celts and, and all of that. And it's yeah. just been, it's basically the same story been shared so many dang times. I saw a lot the of, origin got, you know, lost. Time. I did see a lot of mythological things like 
uh, references to obviously obviously to druidism and such, but also um, Scottish mythology as well. With um, I, I, I would be thinking Scottish or Celtic, I'm not too sure, but with the fair folk, um, it kind of reminded me of some of those like poems and that I've read from then, or little short stories. Um, yeah, I need to actually uh, cross reference it <laughs> before because I'm, I'm, my memory sucks. But uh, yeah, I, I, I don't, it just felt mythological to me, and that's I like that in movies generally, as long as it's not badly written. But <laughs> yes, purple. That's it. Gun, gun, destroop cauldron. It's highly decorated. That's the one. She's got it. See, I knew she would. I knew she would know. Purple's got my back on myth, man. We are a <laughs> we are a myth powerhouse. <laughs> <laughs> you goon. So, all right, folks. Well, I want to think. I think we're gonna wrap it up here because, like I said, Katie has got a stream here in a little bit, and we're gonna be. Um, I'm gonna be switching over and helping her out with that and everything. So. If you're a lover of Buffy as much as I am, and I am a Buffy super fan, always have been, always will be, probably will be till I'm old and gray. And sh well, she's old and gray too. <laughs> not you, Katie. Um, yeah. <laughs> not you, not, not you, Katie. I'm talking about uh, the, the 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 lovely young lady who plays uh, uh, Buffy, Sarah Michelle Gellar. <laughs> so, oh, but I, Sarah Michelle Gellar. <laughs> Stop it. Don't pick on don't pick on my high school crush. I'll box no, your ears. No, I would never do that. So it's okay. well I want I want to thank everybody for tuning in tonight. Uh, my moderator Sherry Storm Dragon always being here, always being awesome. Thank you, ma'am, for everything you do. Uh, to everybody that's been in the chat, Mr. CCDV and Mountains of Elysium, Purple Lady, Speaker for the Dead. Um, Mac World Entertainment. And I'm thinking, I, uh, just another nerd. Everybody else who's been here that I might have missed Superior Hero Reviews. Everybody that's been here, everybody that'll catch us on the replay. I hope you enjoyed our discussion tonight. Uh, make sure you like and share this. I am, um, uh, I've mentioned this, I'm gonna be mentioning it over the next several weeks or anything. When I hit 300 subscribers, I'm going to do something special. And uh, that special thing is we're going to have a 90s music discussion and karaoke night. So if you want to get me to 300 subscribers, share these streams, share my videos out with your friends who dig what I am doing on my channel and everything. And uh, the sooner I get to 300, the sooner I can do that stream. So... Uh, Mr. CCDV, uh, Kathy is going to be, re uh, she's going to start reviewing Buffy the Vampire Slayer. We're going to be doing the first two episodes tonight. Uh, we're going to be talking about um, Welcome to the Hellmouth and the Harvest. So, uh, Kathy, what time is that stream exactly? Uh, 9 p.m. Central. Okay, so in about, well, just a little over half an hour. So, but as I mentioned earlier, <laughs> Me and Loki are going to be doing a double header on Friday. I'll be on his channel, so make sure you tune in for that for Mornings of Mischief. And then um, we've got Afternoons with the Ambassador at 4 p.m. Central Time. And we'll be reviewing Highlander. And then, of course, oh, as I mentioned, and then, of course, um, Friday night, I'm going to be on Orange Hat Reviews channel and everything. We're going to be talking about who would win a war between... Um, the Xenomorphs from the Aliens universe and the Mandalorians from the Star Wars universe. So, and then of course, this Saturday night on my channel on the Ambassadorial Wing Saturday Night Edition, we'll be discussing the final season and the final episode of Clone Wars. So, be sure to tune in for that. That will be at normal time, seven thirty Central Time. So, um, just a quick note on the channel next Saturday, and I'll mention this a couple times next Saturday, there will be no stream. Me and the missus are celebrating our fifth wedding anniversary, and I'm taking the weekend off. So, Congratulations. Yeah, Congrats. thank you, Rose. Congrats. Thank man. you, Rocast. I appreciate that. And I don't know as of yet if I'm going to do a Wednesday night stream. Everything, this was just something I was going to do for a little while. I might 
put it on the shelf for a little bit and then maybe revisit it again and everything. Um, might start doing it maybe just once a month or twice a month. It won't be every week and everything, but I'll let you all know on Twitter and what have you. So uh, be sure and keep your eyes out for that. Uh, for those of you who have not already, if you're interested in joining my Discord, I do have a Discord. If you're interested, you can reach me on Twitter at my Twitter handle, which is on my uh, on my card here. So um, if you're interested in joining, in joining the Discord, the Ambassador Wing Discord, uh, just let me know. So, and uh, again, folks, thank you all for tuning in. Those of you that will catch us on the replay, I hope you enjoy it. So y'all have a good night, and until next time. Well, hold on. Uh, guys, do you have anything you want to plug before we sign off? I feel bad. I usually let you all plug <laughs> stuff, and I didn't. So is there anything you want to plug that I, that I may not have or haven't already? Um, yeah, please. <clears throat> Um, subscribe to my podcast. I'm going to be rebranding it soon um, because of my, I've got a new co-host, Bashti, and we're going to be um, mixing it up a little bit. So it's going to be Rogue Nerf Herders. So that should be fun. <laughs> um, I wish I could say I came up with that, but I didn't. Um, I don't like to take credit for things I didn't come up with. Um, and subscribe to my channel, Rogue's Hub. I'm going to be doing a lot more on that, like the Simpsons stream. Uh, on the 16th, yeah. I've asked Loki to come on my channel, and I'm extending the invite to anybody else, but also onto your channels as well, if you want to. Um, to pay homage to cinemasker angry video game nerd he's been on youtube now for 15 years and mm -hmm. to me he's like a big inspiration for coming onto youtube uh, a bit of a role model on how to behave I agree. and yeah i want to just pay respect um not in a way like he's died or anything his channel's still great no oh, yeah. um, no <laughs> great channel you know, i watch i watch him on occasion yeah uh, if you don't know who he's talking about folks he's talking about james rolf the angry video yeah. game nerd. so but yeah definitely feel, yeah He's the, long, uh, the, the channel I've been subscribed to the longest, and yeah, I just want to um, just do something nice and just remember the old games as well from the 90s and the 80s. Yes. So, um, Loki, is there anything that you want to plug that I haven't already? Yeah, yeah, bud. Um, Shia brought up something. She was going to uh, plug Purple's channel if Purple had a channel, but she didn't you know, see that she had one. Uh, the Valkyries are taking flight and are going to have their own morning show. This is going to be coming up in the next couple of weeks. We are expanding. Yeah. It's going to be a morning show after oh. mine. So um, just keep your eyes out. And yes, eventually Purple and Sam will have their own channel. Awesome. Outstanding. Glad to hear that. So then, so. you know, I get to work as a wrench for them, you know. <laughs> so. <laughs> so. Well, of course, Kathia, I know I'm, I plugged your thing that's going to be going here in a little bit. Is there anything else you want to bring up before we sign off? Um, not, um, no, not, um, not really. No. Okay. Oh, buy Loki's t-shirt, I guess. Let's <laughs> <laughs> well, find everybody. Bye. 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 Loki. Everybody's okay. Loki. Okay. Well, folks, that's all we've got for you tonight. Thank you again to everybody who tuned in. Thank you to my panel, Stone Loki, Rokas, and Kathia Star. Glad y'all could tune in this evening. Glad y'all could be here. So until next time, folks, this is the Ambassadors signing off. <laughs>